Hi, this is uh, Vince Ray, and I'm CTO over at uh, Virtual Z Computing, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Zach, which is our latest product, and we're really excited about it. Now, Zach is a product that um, helps customers achieve data sharing, uh, specifically between applications running on IBM mainframes, uh, running the ZOS operating system and various cloud data sources. And in today's world, data exists everywhere. It could be in uh, Azure Cloud, it could be in the Amazon Cloud, it could be in Google, Dropbox, any number of places. Zach is software that allows any application on the mainframe to access any of those data sources as though they were just more local data. So it unlocks the ability for mainframe applications to process data no matter where it is. And they're really important uh, cost savings, performance, and you know all sorts of other uh, benefits to doing this. So one of the cool things about Zach is that we've designed it so that industry standard file system drivers can be plugged right in. What we're going to look at today is Microsoft's uh, driver for uh, Azure. We were able to take this into Zach and uh, you know it provides us access to resources in the Azure cloud. It's what makes us open-ended. It it's what allows us to plug in all sorts of different uh, solutions as we go. So before you can get started with Zach, there's some kind of basic setup and configuration steps that you go through. Uh, you know, Zach is deeply integrated with ZOS, and the first thing we need to do is let ZOS know that we have a new type of file system that it needs to support. So the way this is done is you do what you see on the screen here. We edit some of our system parameters and we add what's uh, highlighted here. We tell ZOS that it has a new type of uh, file system uh, to support. It's called Zach and you know basically how to invoke it. Once we do this, we're pretty much uh, pretty much ready to go. Next time we um, you know, shut down and re-IPL our system, we'll see you know, a variety of different messages when the system comes back up, similar to what you see highlighted on the screen here. This kind of shows us that Zach has been installed, it's been activated by ZOS, and now it's really you know, ready to process requests from you know, whatever whatever sources. So you know at this point we have the basic system configuration done. We're ready to kind of go a step deeper. What we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the setup that's needed for accessing an Azure file system. Now the way this is done is we maintain a directory uh, of all of our configuration data and all the parameters that are going to be needed for really anything that we want to connect to are going to be defined in here. We're going to look at the one called azure.conf which is uh, everything we're going to require in order to uh, access Azure. And in here you'll see there's you know basic descriptive information, you know the name of the driver to use, uh, the URL we want to connect to, um, you know where we're going to mount the, uh, the the file system, and credentials. You know, and this is basically what we would need for any different type of uh, data source we want to connect to. So now that everything's configured, let's go look at actually accessing some data. So here I'm just back on my ZOS system. Uh, I'm just running nothing more than a standard uh, uh, shell session. And I'm going to issue a mount command. The mount command, uh, I'm going to specify that I want it directed to Zach. I'm going to reference that configuration file we just looked at. And I'm going to specify a mount point. See it, it executed very quickly. We, you know, we just went out to Azure, authenticated, set up the, the, the connection, and we're ready to go now. In fact, I can switch to the Azure directory that I just mounted, and I can display some information about it. DF is display file system. If I display the um, you know, verbose form of that, I can see uh, very specifically that it's being managed by Zach and you know, some other details about the file system that we've got out there. 
So, um, you know, we are connected at this point. The, the data is live. If I list what else is in this directory, I see some, you know, pre-existing data files that were there from, you know, other uses. But, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to use this command line that you see here to just write an empty file about 100k of binary zeros that's going to demonstrate accessing and writing to the Azure cloud. So, you know, now if I go back and list the contents, I can see there's a new file called blob. It's about 100k long. But let's go look at it on, you know, from the other side. I'm, I'm here in the browser looking at my Azure environment. Uh, I refresh the screen, I can see that file I created, and I can see that, you know, as I expected, it's 100k long. So I was able to write that file, uh, you know, directly from my shell session. So let's look at a few other ways we can uh, access Azure storage from my mainframe. One example is um, the ISPF editor. You know, it's a pretty standard component of, of ZOS. Uh, I'm just going to reference a file, uh, and I'm going to request that it be encoded in ASCII for this example. Uh, you can tell it's a new file. There's no prior content here that I'm displaying. Uh, so I'm just going to type in something, you know, random data could be whatever we want it to be. Uh, and I'm going to um, uh, save that file. The act of saving it is going to update it in Azure. And, you know, you can see from the message it absolutely was, was saved there. So let's go do the same thing again. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh the display of the files in my account. And now I can see something called editor, which is this file we just created. You can see all the attributes that Azure keeps for it. But in this case, you know, let's go edit it because I requested it to be encoded in ASCII. I can see it exactly as I expect to see it. So, um, you know, it exactly matches what we typed in. So let's go look at one other thing we can do is uh, access the Azure Cloud through JCL, so batch applications running on ZOS. I'm just going to submit this. Uh, it's going to run, you know, just very briefly. Uh, you know, we can see from the message here it worked. And I'm going to do the same thing again and go back to the Azure Cloud, refresh the contents of my uh, storage uh, container, and I see that JCL data file that I just created. Again, it's uh, you know out there exactly as I expect. Now, in this case, I didn't specify ASCII encoding. I just wanted to demonstrate we can also write mainframe EBCDIC data just as easily as we can ASCII. So we looked at a couple of things. We looked at kind of the basics of how to get up and running. And we looked at a handful of different ways that um, we can create and access different files on the uh, in the Azure cloud. It's all built into Zach, works exactly as we've seen. So thanks for watching, and uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, more as it comes.